get your color analysis done and you will be blown away about what color can do to your natural features. Have you had your color analysis done as well? <laughs> no, because I just love all colors. So like, I think <laughs> I wouldn't really like, I don't know. I'm not afraid to wear color though. I think if I was afraid to wear color, I would have it done, but I don't think it would change how I dress because no, I think just, like, yeah, I think yeah. That it's definitely good for people who want to explore more, not sure where, but I'm like, my, my wardrobe's like a, a rainbow, like I, there's everything in there, yeah. um, so I feel you. And um, on a similar vein, we're talking about different tips for people, the everyday person who, yes, wants to really maybe expand their wings, but they're not sure how. Do you have any style philosophies that you'd like to share that you think people should really listen to? Um gosh I just think you should wear what makes you feel the best and don't worry about the trends you know trends come and go I think buying staples that make you feel your absolute best I know we kind of touched on this briefly but I think I'm a huge believer in it like I always love a bit of sparkle so embellished pieces bring me the most joy so I think when I see items like that um and especially like if it's gone on sale I'm like Yes, that's for me. I'll keep that forever. Um, but yeah, I don't really pay attention to the trends that much. Like obviously here and there, like I've said goodbye to skinny jeans and hello to the comfier <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not that trend obsessed. And I think it's because I'm trying to be more sustainable. I try not to purchase from fast fashion. Um, I did this segment in Chicago where I'm from on like fast fashion and how detrimental it is to the environment and um, how there's this website called Shop Up. I think it's here as well, but it caters to all sizes. So it's like really in the front line of like um, plus size sustainable fashion. Mm -hmm. And um, because I think what I find is a lot of my friends who are – um, in bigger sizes, they are the ones that are struggling the most to find sustainable options to wear. Mm-hmm. So I think f- just, you know, making the options that are sustainable um, more known and out there for people, yes. um, I think the better. I think that's a brilliant point. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that in the sustainable conversation. And I know I've noticed that, like I'll go on Depop or eBay sometimes and I just see a lot of size sixes, size eights and yeah, it's a bit it's a bit difficult to to be sustainable when you don't feel like you can fit in. So yeah, more platforms making it more available for everybody to be sustainable. Mm-hmm. I definitely think that's something that needs to be addressed, um, which is great. Um yeah. I want to pivot slightly and talk about nostalgia. So I've talked a lot about nostalgia being such a persuasive tool because people always look back at the olden days, even days that they weren't even alive for yet. And they look back on it positively. And I think that's why some of your styling work with Gossip Girl, like you said, the Duchess is still, it still has such a strong hold, especially on this like Gen Z and millennials, because we love looking back at nostalgia. And it's interesting. I think there's a bit of a correlation with life being a bit stressful and then the power of nostalgia being a bit stronger because people want that escape and then I like thinking about nostalgia and how it influences like vintage clothes and like old clothes that like you might have so I want to talk about like your personal wardrobe like what's the oldest thing that you have in there and how does it make you feel when you wear it and like what's the story behind it um the oldest thing I have um I was given this, um, I was given this cardigan, um, for my birthday when I, one of the years I was on Gossip Girl and it was worn by Serena, um, on one of the episodes and I was obsessed with it and I was like, oh, I really want it. Like I can't afford it. Um, because obviously all their stuff was so expensive. Um, and they got it for me for my birthday and I was like, so over the moon excited. And I was like, like been worn on the show, like how cool, um, and I still have it and I still wear it like all the time. Um, it's like this gray waffle print, um, long line cardigan. Yeah. And it has like little embellishments like all over it, yeah. like different types of embellishments too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of my favorite things ever. It's definitely looking more worn now, but it's like, I, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with it still. And yeah. it's been, I don't even know how many years, like 
almost probably 15 years. Wow. No, maybe, I mean, how old am I? I'm 35. So like, <laughs> I don't know, like 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Well, I thought I was good still having things from eight years ago, but yeah, 12 years. <laughs> amazing. And I think, see, it's possible. People think that, oh, you, you can't have things that's too old or like you have to keep consuming all the time. But if you have something or buy things that you truly love or people yeah. buy that are super thoughtful, then they are going to get a lot of rewear and they're going to be meaning, really meaningful. So, yeah, I love that. So, you still have things in your wardrobe that you're wearing now that's from a long time ago but I'd love to know maybe how your style has evolved over the years if it has a lot or if just slightly can you speak to any changes that you've noticed in the way that you dress um I think I haven't really changed my style that I mean it's always changing and always evolving yeah. but I've always really been into like sparkle and embellishments yeah. I think I touched on that previously yeah. so I think I still love that sort of thing. I think maybe the only thing that's really changed is like I maybe dress a little bit less sexy than I did when I was like in my 20s. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree that too. In my book, I talk about like getting rid of all of my Poochie Mama like party dresses when I was 18 because I was looking at them and I was like, I don't feel like that anymore but not to say that we can't like we can yeah. show both our bodies we can step out but it's just like maybe you feel differently maybe you're just not in that space anymore and yeah, yeah it's important to grow and let your wardrobe grow with you exactly mm -hmm. yeah I used to do bottle service like in my early oh. 20s as well and so my dresses some of those I'm like I don't even think I could fit one leg in let alone my whole body. <laughs> <laughs> I love that and you look at those tops and you're like who wore that like who yeah. wore that Jennifer like I don't recall that anymore yeah. um, so I just love a lot of your work and I'm sure you've inspired a lot of people but I'd love to know like who's inspired you and your work over the years I think a lot of the time it's people I've worked for so um Eric Damon was the costume designer of Gossip Girl and he really really inspired me yeah. um I just thought he was brilliant he worked on um sex in the city as an assistant before he did gossip girl that makes so, so much sense I wanted to ask that because I feel like there's such a crossover in the way that the styling is on both shows so oh my god yeah. so interesting so he, he was so like so huge in my life and in like the inspiration um I worked for Josie who um was the creative director of Elle magazine while I was there mm -hmm. Um, so he did all the cover shoots and stuff. And I think I just learned so much from those two men um, creatively and like how to organize yourself so that you could have multiple projects going on at once. Yeah. And um, yeah, be organized for all of them. Um, yeah. So I think it was just people that I worked for. I really was really, really lucky that I had good mentors. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. And maybe for upcoming stylists, like what advice would you give to them? Because I know a lot of stylists, they they follow fashion and psychology and they utilize it in their work. But as someone that's so accomplished and experienced, like what specific advice could you give? In my best advice would probably be to just keep at it and give it your all. And don't be afraid to ask for experience. Mm -hmm. So... And email and email again, because a lot of times I get emails from people and they'll be like, they'll be like, do you have any shoots coming up? I can assist on for work experience. Yeah. And I'm, I'll look at it. I'm like, I need to remember that. And then it's lost in the season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, just follow up. Like, and don't feel like you're annoying the, these people because mm -hmm. it's just, we're really busy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, things get lost yeah. in, but it's not that we don't want to help you because we want to help as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. Yes. So I would be happy to have as many people like email me that want to learn the ins and outs. And I try to take on as many people as I can um, oh, and give people experience because just takes one photo shoot for like, a, you know, a stylist to go on, um, see the ins and outs, and then you'll build up your book to assist other people. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, just persistence and you know, getting yourself out there, go to the events, go and just do test shoots as well. Mm -hmm. Test shoots are so important. Email photographers who are looking to do work. 
And unfortunately it's free because you're building your book, but you know, the, the photographer is not getting paid. The models aren't getting paid. Like it's, everyone's doing it for free and it's just to build your portfolio so you could showcase what you have to offer. Yeah.